Hi, Madeline here from Sonic Bloom with a new episode of the Abon Life Insider Tips. This time I want to show you a very cool feature that I just discovered recently by accident when I was looking something up specifically in the manual and I checked and it turned out that was a feature already added in Life 11 and that is project defaults. If you don't know what the defaults are that you can set for Ableton Life, then I'm just quickly going to show you here in the user library, we have a defaults folder and when we check, you can see that we can add defaults for live devices, the audio to MIDI functions, creating tracks, dropping samples, and also slicing. If you don't know how that works, I'm going to link a tutorial so that you can learn how it works. And the same principle is also available now in projects. So if you create a new live project and let's say you like to split how you work, like for example, you don't do sound design at the same time as creating ideas and mixing and so on, but you actually like to kind of dedicate time to the different parts of music production, then this can be really helpful because, for example, let's say you want to create a, a drum rack that contains drum sampler by default, and maybe not only that, but a drum sampler with specific settings in place that you would not want to use otherwise, but you want to do for this one drum rack or maybe a set of drum racks that you want to create or the same could be for let's say audio to MIDI functions or just specific presets for audio effects that you want to use just for like say mixing and mastering. There's lots of possibilities how you can use this feature and how it works. The first thing we're going to have to do is actually save a live set. So I'm just going to call that project defaults. And then what you're going to have to do is basically recreate the folder structure. So we're going to go into this project and then we're going to have to create a new folder called defaults. And now depending on what you want to do, you're going to have to recreate the folders that you need for depending on what folders you want. So let's go back here and let's say we want this for maybe dropping samples. So then we're going to have to create a folder called dropping samples and then on drum rack. So that to go with my first example of how you could use this. So let's go back here, go in, create a new folder called dropping samples. Go into that one, create another new folder on drum rack. I'm just going to check that I got that spelled right and everything. Yep, so that's right. And so now let's say we want a specific drum sampler preset. So we can just set, put this in and then let's say this is supposed to be louder because we're going to use samples that are a bit more quiet and then you want to use maybe the ring modulator every time and then set it to what you need and maybe the attack time should be a little bit higher as well and the decay time set to maximum because maybe you're working with really long samples in this case and then we can just go to the current project here and we can see that the defaults folder turns up and then I can just drag that in here and name that drum sampler preset. And now if I drag a sample onto a drum rack pad, let me just check what can we take. I'll just drag that in. And you can see it has recreated that drum sampler with the ring modulation settings and the volume higher and the attack higher and the decay very long. And so you can just use this for any of the defaults. The one that it doesn't really make all that much sense for is the slicing because you can create as many slicing presets as you want and then those will be turning up as an option when you slice to MIDI. But other than that, you could create presets for audio effects as well, 
media facts or various instruments or like the audio to MIDI functions. It really depends on what you're planning to do within this live set or live project. And you can just use that and have a much quicker workflow that way. Well, that's it. I hope you found this useful. If you did, don't forget to like, share and subscribe. And I'll see you next time. Until then, bye.